It started as a workers' protest against mandatory vaccinations. But unions have disowned the marchers who've rampaged through Melbourne streets all day. So who's actually behind the high-vis turnout? Anger, then anarchy. A vicious mob unleashing on police, pelting and kicking cars with no regard for anyone or anything. Riot police aren't far behind, firing non-lethal rounds to disperse the crowd. The chaos shut down city streets, then Melbourne's major arterial road, the Westgate Bridge. Flares in hand, unruly activists walked into oncoming traffic, jumped on cars and lit illegal fireworks. Stunned motorists were forced to run the gauntlet. <gasps> they hitched rides, unbelievably hanging out of vehicles, before dozens jumped on the tray of this moving truck. The activists turned out early this morning, holding the city hostage for the entire day. To See police having to use rubber bullets and have the riot squad out there, uh, you know, pretty distressing for a lot of people. Melbourne became a sea of high vis, tradies, and many others turning out. I call them professional protesters. I've been told there's been Nazi groups, extreme right wing groups, all sorts of groups there. Their hostility all over mandatory vaccines for Victorian construction workers. Mate, we're out here because we have a right. Hundreds of police saturated city streets, including the critical incident response team, usually reserved for major incidents. They were constantly kept on the move, playing a game of cat and mouse all day. The alcohol-fueled chaos began yesterday when angry tradies turned up to their union headquarters. Today, union boss John Setka was seething. I've never ever in my life in the trade union movement seen anything like this. Hours after last night's city brawl, the government shut down the entire construction industry, costing an estimated $1 billion a week. All up, 337 COVID cases have been linked to 153 construction sites. These drunken morons have virtually uh, closed down the industry. Uh, you know, you've got 300,000 uh, plus workers now sitting at home without an income. Despite insisting they're not violent, rioters assaulted media and taunted police. What the f is wrong with you? You need them. You don't. You're to lying and you're keep causing people to die. How That's are we lying? You, it's on your conscience. As the protesters were warned, leave now or force may be used. The unruly crowd fired back. You tear it down! F you! We're not aggressive, nothing like that. All we want to do is just show that we. <laughs> no, 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 that was excellent. Tensions are steadily building between protesters and police who've now formed a huge barricade around Parliament House, fearing scenes that we saw in the US Capitol back in January could happen right here in Australia. For these people that aren't even members of the union to be throwing stubbies and bottles of alcohol and projectiles at people and at the building and smashing it was just absolutely disgraceful. Essential workers and shoppers were caught in the middle. I don't support violence or, you know, uh, a demonstration every day. No, I don't. But I can understand the anger of the people because I'm angry. I'm angry every single Day. While tradies were chanting for their right not to take up the jab, these two were spotted taking a quick break. It's all a slap in the face to those doing the right thing, like builder Mark Little. If this is the way we get back to work, then yes, the, the government set us targets and for us all to get back to work safely, then yeah, vaccination's the way to go. Mark's also president of the Master Builders Association, Victoria. If this keeps going, you know, I'd, I'd expect it, it'd, it'd definitely cost my business three to four weeks and at least $30,000. The anti-lockdown protesters have promised to return every day until their 12 demands are met, including the immediate resignation of the Premier and the mass distribution of horse medication, ivermectin and vitamin C. Yeah!